Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Are we ready to laugh tonight? Yeah! Are you ready to have a good time? Yeah! Do you want to hear some really good jokes and life experiences? Yeah! Right then, I'll fuck off and I'll let the next person <laughs> Now I'm going to start talking about when you have awkward situations or when you have silly arguments with your family members. Now, me and my dad, we used to argue over the most stupid stuff. And the one argument that's always stuck in the back of my mind is that once he accused me of using too much toilet paper. <laughs> I shit you not. Pardon the pun. <laughs> now, well, the thing is that I finished work home, I got home, and uh, my father was standing there and he was just holding the empty row of toilet paper. And he said to me, he said... What have you been doing? And to start off with, I was thinking, what was going through his mind? Was he thinking I was like a bee Andrex puppy? Grabbing it, running around for the house, enjoying myself. <laughs> or that he might have thought I was doing some intensive wanking. <laughs> and you know that family members, certain family members give advice to their children. You know, like they say stuff like, I heard one parent say this, and I think it's beautiful. It's, a, it's not what you know, it's who you know. I thought that was absolutely lovely. When my father said to me, he said, son, when you get older, do not get married and do not have children. To his seven-year-old son. So what he actually was saying is that, I hate you, mother, and you were a mistake. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to worry, because at the end of the day, I had always a family member to look up to. And it was my uncle. I wouldn't you if you were on your knees, had your mouth open, taking a cock in the back of your throat. <laughs> actually doing this, I should have said this at the beginning, and, um, where was I? Mother, mother here, mother there, yes, uh, and I could just imagine my, uh, um, me getting my first heckler, and my heckler just looking at me and going, oh, hey, mate, you're shit, and then I could just imagine my mom coming up to me and saying, leave my boo-boo alone, <laughs> I would kill him, oh, <laughs> uh, thanks, man. anyway, I'm going to say to my girlfriend, I'm, I'm going to give a stand up a go, you know, I'm going to, you know, try and entertain the ladies and gentlemen. And uh, she turned around, she said, well, if you don't get any laughs, you could always show them your penis. <laughs> I thought, fuck that. It takes two hands to get this out. She went, yes, I know, one to unzip and one to pull out. <laughs> and, um, well... When I go to certain places to do stand-up, oh, I like to do a, uh, like a little bit of paragraph, like a little bit of a, uh, a poem or something like that. So when I went on to the internet, I found a little bit of a crowdly heap. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Don't scratch. <laughs> the black country, black by day and red by night, cannot be matched by the vast and varied production by any further space of equal radius on the surface of the globe. Now, isn't that lovely to describe about Cradley Heath? Now, I know what you're thinking there, sir. You're thinking, that's not the only research you did on the internet. <laughs> you're fucking right, I found about this. <laughs> and you know what? You can keep that. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a true story about what actually happened to an American man. Uh, he was basically pissing, and it was extremely hurting him quite badly. They're swapping it around. <laughs> you know what, you can keep it. I don't want it back. I bet it's going to be a bit too sticky. <laughs> Sorry, that's just going a bit too far. Anyway, yes, back. Um, yes, American man. Yes, American man. Basically, he was pissing quite... Well, he was pissing, and it was stinging him, stinging him quite badly. So he went to his surgeon, and his surgeon turned around and said, listen here, we're circumcised you. We'll take a little bit off, and hopefully everything will be right. 
But the doctor, Ron, was cutting away and he realised that the man had a very rare type of cancer. It's like, eh. Well, to save the guy's life, he had to amputate the guy's dick. So he was cutting away and removed it. And when the guy woke up, he was shocked. He was so angry that the doctor removed the dick without asking his permission. From my point of view, I bet the doctor felt a bit relieved that he didn't slip or he would have gotten the sack. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, well, as my other friends aren't here, I'm going to say their name. Christopher and Nicky. Right, this is a story they didn't really want me to tell, but I'm going to tell it anyway. Um, Chris and Nicky, they were enjoying each other's company in the car, just driving along, going... So I can't whistle. So I go. And then the cab just jumped in front of the car. And then you just hit the brakes and went. That was lucky. A white van man behind him thought, fuck this, fucking over talk, hit the cat at full speed. I know what some of you are thinking. Was the cat alright? Let's just say it was in peace. Oh, pieces scattered all over the place. Well, my friend thought, right, I'm going to do the right thing, right? He got out of his car, got a black bling liner, went off, got parts of the cat, put it in the bag, right, and he was going to go to each house, knock on it and say, do you own a cat? That seemed quite good in his point of view. So he's knocking on the door, and then eventually a little girl opened the door, and she went, hello, and he said, do you own a cat? She went, yeah. So he opened it and showed the contents of the bag to her, she went, he went, no, not really, it's more like squishy. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, my mother recently got a dog to keep her company, which is nice, yes. I thought she might get, like, a Jack Russell or a Lil Chihuahua or anything like that. No. <laughs> what she actually decided to do is that when she went to the pet centre, she must have went down this dark corridor with a light flashing and everything like that, and it got to this one kennel where this beast of a dog came out, blood around its mouth, signs that said, do not enter, dangerous animal, and my mum turned around and said, I have that one. <laughs> well, the thing is that I didn't realise what she had. So when I turned up at the house, I was expecting, hey, puppy, 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 and the thing saw me, and the door closed, and it was pinned against the wall, and it fucking ran towards me, and it did the most weirdest and sexual experience I've ever had, it sniffed and it barked at the same time around my dick area. <laughs> sort of reminded me of my uncle. But anyway, he was... <laughs> I was thinking, for fuck's sake, don't, don't, don't sneeze. And then eventually, when my mum stopped laughing, she grabbed the dog and she went, there you go. And she went up to me and she said, you're right. I said, you know what, Mum, it sort of shrunk a bit, but thanks for asking. Did you hear about this with um, Katie Price and Peter Andre had an argument over one of the presents they got for the children. They got a motorbike. Katie Price had bought a motorbike, one of the children, and Peter Andre turned around and said, it's a bit too dangerous for them. And in my point of view, I have to agree with him. I'm just hoping it's not for Harvey. <laughs> oh, Frankie Boy can do it, why can't I? <laughs> That's good, at least. Uh, I was at work a couple of days ago, and I was speaking to one of my colleagues, Christian. I went up to him and said, mate, have you ever for your girlfriend for a threesome? He turned around and he said, funny enough, you asked that. I was, yeah, uh, we were sitting down watching every day, you know, enjoying ourselves. And then she turned around and she said, Christian, would you like a threesome with my friend, Michelle? And Christian turned around and he said, you know what, love? You're the only woman I want, and I don't want to share you with anyone else. And all the women are thinking, oh, I'm that sweet. And all the guys are thinking, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> but I turned around to him, and I said, you know what, mate? I wouldn't mind a threesome one bit. He said, are you telling me you had another woman going down on your girlfriend and make her mad like you've never heard of before? I said, mate, I've made my girlfriend mad. He went, really? I went, yes. 
Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'll be gentle. We're ready for another break. Right, uh...